Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Top 10 phrases you need for a date. So you can use these phrases to ask a girl or a boy out on a date in Cantonese. How cool is that? So let's start. Would you like to go out to dinner with me? The first phrase is Would you like to go out to dinner with me? So mean literally means um, to do the honor of or to give me your free time. So it's a bit fancy, but if someone asks me, I'll be like, ooh, so fancy, okay. <laughs> it's a little formal, but it's always good to be formal when you're asking someone out on a date. You don't want it to be too casual. Are you free this weekend? Are you free this weekend? So, you. This weekend, are you free or not? So, are you free this weekend? And uh, you can also say weekend as in the English in the sentence. So you can say, Are you free this weekend? So if you say yes, I'm free, you can say tahan. If you are not free or you don't want to go out with that person, you can say tahan. So tahan and tahan. Would you like to hang out with me? Would you like to hang out with me? It uh, literally means to go out and play together. Because in Cantonese, there's no translation for hang out. So we usually just say like to go out together. So to, uh, you and me, us, we. Go play together. How about that? So would you like to go hang out with me? Or you can say Would you like to go watch a movie with me? You are very cute. 你好得意, you are very cute. That e means a cute. We usually use it for uh, kids or little girls or like young girls, teenagers as well. So uh, you're cute, 你好得意. Would I say it to a guy? I don't think so. I think some guy might feel offended if someone tells them they are like cute. Like in English, you can say that, oh, that guy is cute. But uh, in Cantonese, if you say that, it usually means something that is like small and cute, like um, tiny, cute thing. So I don't think guys want that kind of compliment. <laughs> Or it's not a compliment to them to be small and tiny. 你好靚, you are pretty. So uh, the next phrase is 你好靚, you are pretty. 你好靚, so 靚 is pretty or beautiful. You can, um, yeah, I guess paying a compliment would be a nice thing before you ask anyone out for a date. So if uh, it was a, me asking a guy, you can say 你好靚仔, you are handsome. 你好靚仔, you are handsome. You are good looking. So lang is for female and langzai is for male. 今晚好开心. That was a great evening. 今晚好开心. That was a great evening. 今晚好开心. 今晚 is uh, this evening and 好开心 is very happy. So literally this evening was happy. So we use this after the date, right? You had a great time and you are thinking if you're going to see each other again. Then first you say, some like I had a great time with you. It was a great evening. 我打给你, I'll call you. 我打给你, I'll call you. You can use this for anyone. It doesn't have to be someone you want to go on a date with. It can be a family or a stranger. Well, not stranger. You're not going to call a stranger. Business related people, anyone, friends. You can say, I'll, 打给你, I'll call you. The longer phrase is, I'll call you on the phone. Since it's well understood that you're going to use the phone, so you can just say, I'll call you. I will drive you home. I'll drive you home. 
我车你 ，literally I drive you or I car you. So 车 is the noun for car or the verb to、uh, drive or to give someone a ride. So I give you I give you a ride home. 翻屋企，屋企 is home and 翻屋企 is like to return home. So 我车你翻屋企 ，I drive you home. That's more like a driver or、Uber. I can just get an Uber. <laughs> Next. 我哋听日几点见 ？What time shall we meet tomorrow？ 我哋听日几点见 ？What time shall we meet tomorrow？ 我哋 we 听日 tomorrow 几点 ？What time？ 见 to meet to see each other。So if you want to confirm、uh, the meeting time with the other person， you can ask 我哋听日几点见 ？What time are we meeting tomorrow？ 我可唔可以再约你？ Can I see you again? 我可唔可以再约你 ？Can I see you again? So 再约你，约 literally means to date you. So to ask you out for a date. So can I ask you out for a date again? So can I see you again? Yeah. So if you have a good, nice evening or a very enjoyable date, and you want to see that person again, you can ask. 我可唔可以再约你 ？Can I see you again? Can I see you again? Can we go out again? Can we have a date again? Can we have a second date? Hi, everybody. Olivia here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Cantonese questions. The question for this lesson is: Why do I sometimes hear "nay" and sometimes "lay"? Pronunciation among native Cantonese speakers in China can be different from that of Cantonese speakers in Hong Kong. A lot of people in Hong Kong, especially the younger generation, use a lot of their own conversational slang and tend to speak with what we call lazy tongue or lan yam. An example is the word "you." The right way to pronounce it is "nei," but in Hong Kong, many people pronounce it as "lei." Lei. Let's get into more details. Why do the variations exist? In the recent two or three generations, lazy tongue pronunciations have become more common. The most significant variations are between the n and l, ng and o, and gw and g consonants. Undoubtedly, the lazy tongue pronunciations are more natural and fluid in speech, and is acceptable because others can still understand the meaning based on context, despite the unstandard pronunciations. Moreover, the Hong Kong school system focuses on standard Chinese writing more than colloquial Cantonese speech, unless one is in the recitation or debate team. Hence, the lazy tongue is rarely corrected. Nowadays, it's common to hear a few lazy tongue pronunciations here and there in daily conversation. So, will the lazy tongue pronunciation eventually take over the standard pronunciation? Despite being used commonly, lazy tongue is still frowned upon in some industries that require clear and proper pronunciation, such as newscasters, radio hosts, actors, etc. In recent years, there were also a few TV programs focusing on fixing the lazy tongue issue and teaching young generations about the importance of using standard pronunciation. Let's look at some examples. For instance, GW versus G. Guo means country, but someone with lazy tongue would pronounce it as guo, guo, and guo. Which consequently changes the meaning and causes confusion. While ngoi guo means overseas, the lazy version ngoi guo means foreign minister. Interestingly enough, there is occasionally hypercorrection of the lazy tongue pronunciations. For example, oi is sometimes pronounced as ngoi mistakenly when the speaker thought the standard form had an ng consonant. Want to speak real Cantonese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at CantoneseClass101.com. Fay tickets. 请问喺边度买飞 May I ask where can I buy tickets? The ticket window is over there. 
Mau mentai is no problem. Saya bilang mentai is there is a problem. The sense is a question. So is there any problem? Nei check in do wo yao mentai. You cannot check in now. Is there any problem? Go to a seafood restaurant to eat seafood. Hai Xin is seafood and Tan Tang is restaurant. Seafood restaurant is Hai Xin Tan Tang. My birthday is in January. Tell us your birthday in the comment section, please. That's very nice. If the roommate or your spouse or your family do that, that's awesome. Can you clean my place for me? Hai Yang Gong Yun Ge Hong Mao Ho Da Yi. The pandas in Ocean Park are very cute. Yes, there are two um, famous um, pandas in Ocean Park. And if you want to have a wedding with pandas at your witness, you can do that at the Ocean Park too. There was a pair of celebrities who did that. They had a wedding at Ocean Park and On On and Gai Gai the pandas were witness for the wedding. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Today is the first day of class. So hockey means semester. In this case, it's the first day of class or first day of semester. So today, 今日是新學期的第一天, is the first day of the new semester. So today is the first day of school. Yay! You get to meet all your new uh, classmates and teachers. So excited! I now know that you and I are truly meant to be together. So, 而家, now, 我知道, I know, 我哋, us, we, 是注定, is um, meant to be, is faithful to, 喺埋一齊, to be together. So, we are meant to be together. Star cross lovers. <laughs> is fate, 命運的安排. Is fate. Next, Ming Pai is brand name or like a famous brand. Sao Dai is a bag. Again, I don't like Ming Pai Sao Dai. Ming Pai Sao Dai. I don't like brand name bags. You can see it everywhere. So boring. Her daughter is very pretty. Your daughter is very good, like behaving very well. If someone's blocking you in the movie theater, just tell them, Please sit down. Don't block me. 做功課, to do homework. 做功課. 唔該, which you heard in please. So it means please and thank you as well. For this 唔該, this thank you, we use it when someone do something for us. Someone give you the change. Someone open the door for you. Pick up a fruit for you. You say 唔該, is uh, thank you for the service. 我飲茶, I drink tea. 飲,我飲茶。你是不是 Olivia? 是,明白。我學廣東話, I learn Cantonese, so that's something you can tell people now that you saw our videos. Excuse me, that is 唔該 again. So we heard 唔該 in three situations. Please, thank you, and now excuse me. So um, if someone is blocking your road, you can say 唔該, 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 and then they would unblock, they, they would go away. If you want to ask someone on the street for the direction, you can say, 唔該,我想問路,唔該,我想問路. Excuse me, I want to ask about the direction. 唔該, to catch someone's attention. Wait, taxi! That's how you can call a taxi on the street. There are a lot of taxis around Hong Kong. For a more, like, more serious situation, for a major failure, you use 對唔住. Doimji is our next word, and um, it means uh, like, I'm really sorry. I broke your computer, I'm so sorry. I lost your son, I'm so sorry. I can't find your son. I'm going home. Where is You want to ask about the, the washroom? It's like, where is the washroom? 洗手間在哪裡? 洗手間在哪裡? My office is in Central. Or you can say 幾錢啊? It's the same as 幾多錢啊? 幾錢啊? You went to Apple Store and you want to buy something and you ask 幾多錢啊? To, uh, to ask for the price. It's always expensive. 快點叫警察! <laughs> Call 
999 to ask for the police. Triple nine. And the last word is Chi begin. I'll see you later. Chi begin. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description. Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Top 10 most common tourist vocabularies. Are you traveling to Hong Kong soon? Let's see the terms that you can use. Here we go. Fei ticket. Fei ticket. 请问在哪里买飞? May I ask where can I buy tickets? The ticket window is over there. Yauha tourist. Yauha tourist. Yauha maye yau gaozi. Tourists can enjoy a 10% off discount. This doesn't apply everywhere in Hong Kong, but in some shops or department stores, they do offer discounts for tourists. So bring your passport with you. Zilam, guidebook. Zilam, guidebook. I would like to buy a guidebook about visiting Japan. Those are really handy. Though it's usually about where to eat and where to go shopping. I don't shop much. So those are not that useful for me. tour bus. Tourists can take the tour bus to go to Disneyland. Miu Temple. Miu Temple. Nigan Miu Hong Fo Ding Sing. This temple has a large number of visitors. Ting Zun Zi Mosque. Ting Zun Zi Mosque. Gao Long Gong Yun Ge Ting Zun Zi Lek Si Yao Gao. The mosque near the Kowloon Park has a long history. It's a very famous mosque in Hong Kong. It's in the center of a tourist attraction. So you're likely to pass by it all the time. Gao Tong. Church. Church. Lots of churches in Macau were listed as World Heritage Sites. They're really nice. They are Portuguese style as well. Waterfall. Waterfall. There are lots of beautiful waterfalls in Hong Kong. For example, the Bryce Pool Waterfall. I have been there when I was a kid. It was very nice. It's very different than other parts of Hong Kong. Hong Kong Tourism Board promotes the hiking tour to tourists. I love hiking tours. Uh, Dragon Bag is one of the famous hiking trails in Hong Kong. Try it if you have a chance. Guide. I don't want to give any tips to the tour guide because his service is so bad. But I guess it's compulsory to give tips to the tour guide? I don't know. Housework. Do you like doing housework? And which chore do you hate the most? Let's see if it's one of the following five. Here we go. So they to sweep. So is like to sweep something and they is floor so to sweep the floor so they it's so dusty sweep the floor i see a dust bunny next word is mat to wipe so this is the cloth i used for wiping the dishes and table and this is for wiping floor mat day bowl and this is mat one bowl mat is to wipe Day is floor, bowl is cloth. Molo mate bowl Do not mix up the cloth you use to wipe the floor and the cloth you use for wiping the table. <laughs> yeah. Don't. <laughs> Next word is Sai to wash. Sai sao, wash your hands. Sai mean, wash your face. Sai won, do the dishes. Sai dei, wash the floor. Sai uh, che, wash the car. You can wash a lot of things. Actually, sai qin is my favorite because it means to spend money. Sai qin, I don't know why it's 
literally wash the money, but to spend money is sai qin. So you can sai zhao, you can sai qin, you can sai min, you can sai che. Yeke lai bai sai san qi san. Do laundry three times a week. Next is zhe fang to tidy up the room. Yao pan yao lei fa di zhe fang la. Friends are coming over. We have to tidy up the room. So if it was a bigger house, you can say zhe o o is house. So zhe fang to clean to tidy up the room. Zhe o to clean and tidy up the whole house. Or you can also say zhe zheng ge yan or zhe zheng zi ge. It means to tidy up yourself to make it presentable. For example, when you go to an interview, how you mean see you zhe zheng di. Tidy up, like clean up yourself before going to an interview. Dam la sa to take out the garbage to throw away the garbage. Dam la sa it kind of sounds like when a rock fall into the water. Dam. I don't know. It's just、uh, the action of throwing things. Dump. From Sinke, yes, Sam. You dump lap sap. We have to take out the garbage every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So here we skip Sinke. Sinke means week. Sinke yet Monday. Sinke Sam Wednesday. Sinke um Friday. But in this case, it is understood that we're talking about the days of the week. So we can just say phone like every phone means every. So phone yes some、mm, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Why is Cantonese different when it is in writing? People in Hong Kong and Macau mainly use Cantonese to communicate. The written form used in Hong Kong is standard Chinese writing, which is somewhat similar to Mandarin, though it uses traditional characters. That is why people always feel confused that the written form of Cantonese looks so similar to Mandarin. So don't get confused. Zhongmen, which denotes the written language used in Hong Kong, is different than Guoyu, which is Mandarin dialect used in mainland China. Let's get into more details. When is written form used in Cantonese? You will find the written form of Cantonese very common in news articles, written notices, research articles, posters, instruction manuals, or pamphlets, and so on. It is crucial to improve Cantonese listening, but it's best to know both spoken Cantonese and written Cantonese to really progress in Cantonese. In Hong Kong, it's required that all government documents be written in standard Chinese writing, not colloquial Cantonese. So what happens if you just want to communicate with the native speaker verbally? Can you not learn the written form? You can just learn the spoken Cantonese if you only want to communicate with the native speaker verbally. But sometimes some words are used in both written and spoken Cantonese. You will find in the long run that it is not easy to clearly divide the words into written or spoken Cantonese. Let's see an example of the difference between spoken and written forms. 我哋 and 我们 both mean we. The first one is used in speech, while the later is in writing, which can be seen in news articles, written notices, or pamphlets. 我哋 is used in colloquial or conversational Cantonese. You may feel 我哋 is more commonly used because you hear it a lot, but actually that just depends on your preference of learning conversational Cantonese over written form Cantonese. Is the number two yi or liang? Yi and liang both mean two. When we're counting, we say yi, yi, sam, se, un. One, two, three, four, five. We don't say yi, liang, sam, se, un. When we're referring to the amount of items, we use liang followed by the measure words. For example, liang ge yan, two people, or liang dui hai, two pair of shoes. What's the rule for using yi and liang? For counting and ordinal numbers, we always use yi. Same for twelve, twenty-two, thirty-two, and so on. For instance, dai yi, second, yi lao, second floor, sam sab yi ge yan, thirty-two people. Also, when referring to things or activities for two people, most of the terms use yi, such as yi yan sai gai. Romantic couple time, literally two people world. Yi and Tou Chan set menu for two. Or Yi and Zhou Hao, 
a team of two, a duel. For most other indications of the amount of two, we use liang, liang dim, two o'clock, liang bun su, two books, liang ge sing ke, two weeks, liang da, two dozen, etc. There are exceptions to the above rules when we're talking about money, and here's where it gets a little confusing. Two dollars is liang man, and never yi man by itself. Twenty dollars is yi sub man, and never liang sub man. And for larger denominations like hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, either yi or liang can be used, except when the number yi sub twenty is involved, such as two hundred thousand yi sub man. Note that this is a different counting system. In English, we say two hundred thousand, but in Cantonese, it's literally twenty ten thousands. In the lesson notes, you'll find a list for your reference. So, what does this character mean? Ya, ya, ya means twenty. It's interchangeable with yi sub in most cases, given that it's followed by another character. For instance, twenty two is yi sub yi or Ya yi, twenty people is yi sub go yan or ya go yan. Interestingly, when yi is the last character in certain words, it's pronounced with the second tone instead of the sixth tone. Here are some examples: mei yi, second last, and sub ba ya yi, young girls, literally eighteen twenty two. Sub ba ya yi. Eighteen twenty-two, meaning young girls. How should I learn to write the Chinese characters? Modern Chinese uses the familiar Western layout of horizontal rows from left to right, read from the top of the page to the bottom. CantoneseClass101.com provides the basic rules for stroke order as well as visual guides for the most common Chinese characters. We'll tell you more about these resources at the end of the lesson. Let's look at some basic information. First, how many characters do people usually use daily? In contemporary Chinese, around three thousand characters are in common usage. Next is the importance of the stroke order when learning how to write the Chinese characters. The stroke order is important because it helps you to remember the character faster and is necessary for typing Chinese when using certain Chinese input methods for computers. It also helps you write calligraphy correctly and beautifully. Finally, let's see an example. Let's try to write the character "how" mouth. So, according to the rules, we start from left to right and top to bottom. So first, we start with the left vertical stroke. The brush begins at the top, then falls downward. Secondly, is the turning stroke starting from left towards right. Then turn ninety degrees to fall downward. Finally, we finish with the bottom horizontal stroke, filled from left to right. So, despite the number of lines in the character, how is actually comprised of three strokes. Remember to see the detailed stroke orders for writing a Chinese character. Check out the Learn Chinese Characters page under Cantonese Resources at the top of our site. Rules hyphen of hyphen stroke hyphen order. To acquire a natural feel for the proper stroke order, you have to practice by writing them on the paper. Please make use of the Hanzi close-up PDF worksheets in each lesson to help you write them correctly and beautifully. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Please leave them in the comment below, and I'll try to answer them. See you next time. Hatsikin. Some characters have multiple pronunciations. How do I know which one to use? Many learners would probably agree that the most challenging part of learning Cantonese is how some characters have multiple pronunciations, depending on the context or combination of words. In order to know which pronunciation to use, you should learn character pronunciation in set terms or phrases rather than learning single characters. Let's get into more details. Why is learning in set terms or phrases better than learning single characters? A character's pronunciation could be different depending on the word class, 
meaning, or context. For example, "te car" is usually pronounced as "te," like in "forte train" and "dan te bicycle." However, in some scenarios, it's pronounced as "go," such as "go ma fai" commuting expenses and "bai ming go ma." To act in an overt manner, it would be wrong and frowned upon if one used the alternate pronunciation. Such variation in spoken Cantonese occurs as a result of phonological, morphological, semantic, and grammatical environments. Generally speaking, there are some basic rules or general guidelines on where and how pronunciation changes will occur, but those rules are not hard and fast ones. And there are always exceptions to the rules. It is habitual usages that really matter. Native speakers won't expect a non-native speaker to use the different pronunciation perfectly, but it will be very impressive if the learners do. It also means that the learners have greater understanding of the language's background and culture. As we just mentioned, sometimes the pronunciation of the same character changes when it's used as a different word class. Let's see an example. For instance, the character "ho" is pronounced "ho" when it is used as an adjective or adverb, "good" or "ready," but when it's used as a verb, it's pronounced as "ho." For example, "he is a good man, but he is a good man. He is a good person, but he likes drinking." Be careful if you pronounce "ho" as "ho." It would be understood that "ho" is the adjective "good," hence the meaning will change to "good wine." What are radicals? Chinese radicals are a rough equivalent of an alphabet and the building blocks of the Chinese characters. Often, the radical itself can be a character on its own. Instead of learning individual Chinese characters one at a time, we essentially learn the building blocks instead. You only have to learn a few radicals to be able to read some of the most common Chinese characters out there. Let's get into more details. Bo sao, which are the radicals, are used to index the characters for Chinese dictionaries and are often reflecting some common semantic or phonetic characteristic. Knowing common radicals can help you greatly with learning new Chinese characters. So, how can radicals help you in learning Chinese characters? Because radicals are the basic components of Chinese characters, and each radical has its semantic or phonetic characteristic, learning the characteristics of radicals helps you to remember how to write and understand the meaning of Chinese characters. Let's see an example. Verbs that have the food radical "zhou" are related to food action. For example, "tao" to run, "te" to kick. Tai to step on, dun to squat. Therefore, it's very common to find the food radical zhou on the left side of verbs that articulate actions done by the foot or leg. What are simplified and traditional characters? Do I need to learn both? In 1949, the Chinese government introduced and promoted simplified Chinese to improve literacy rates. Mainland China adopted the modern version of simplified characters, while Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan continue to use the traditional script. If you can read traditional characters, you can easily learn the simplified form used on the mainland, but not vice versa. Let's get into more details. Which one should you learn, simplified or traditional? Learning simplified Chinese is more suitable if you stay in mainland China or Singapore. Since simplified characters are used in these regions, on the other hand, traditional Chinese characters are used in Hong Kong and Taiwan and are necessary to learn if you live there. The traditional form of Chinese is the older and more classical form, and this is the form used in the most famous and best pieces of Chinese literature and Chinese calligraphy. Though complex, it is really a work of art that builds tens of thousands of characters representing different words. In Cantonese, traditional characters are called fan tai ji, literally complex characters. Parts within a character often give hints of the character's meaning or pronunciation. For example, let's look at the character one cloud, one cloud. At the top, there is yu 
which means rain. At the bottom, there is one, which gives a hint about the pronunciation. One. What about native speakers? Can they understand both simplified and traditional characters? All native speakers in Hong Kong learn traditional characters at school, but most of them can easily recognize or guess the simplified form since they somewhat follow a pattern. Here are some examples of traditional characters and their simplified version: Feng, wind, how behind, sat, solid, sick, appropriate, Guang, broad. Tang hall or room, Heng celebration. How do I know when to use mgoi and when to use doze? Mgoi and doze both mean thank you in Cantonese, but we use them in different scenarios to show gratification. First, let's see when to use mgoi. When thanking someone for a service or assistance, we say mgoi. In the Cantonese language. Goi has a few meanings. We most commonly use this to mean thanks in a casual way. We can also use it to mean please or excuse me, where it's commonly used to catch someone's attention, especially in a um, restaurant or shopping setting. For example, this one please. Ni ga mgai. So when do we use do zhe? We use doze when receiving a gift or money. Remember that doze expresses a deeper appreciation of personal kindness, and is used in most formal situations. When saying thank you very much, you just need to add sai, m goi sai, or doze sai. It's like saying thank you very much. Finally, how do you answer when you are thanked? You can say, "Um, say ha he, um, say ha he." This literally means no need to be polite, but it is the equivalent of "you're welcome." What are some common loan words? Loan words. Since Hong Kong was a British colony before 1997, lots of English words were adopted and modified into Cantonese words and are widely used nowadays in Hong Kong. Let's get into more details. Most of the loan words are from English because Hong Kong was a colony of England before 1997. Even after the handover of 1997, English is still the official language, besides Chinese, under the Hong Kong Basic Laws. Most loan words are only commonly used in Hong Kong and are not applicable in other Cantonese-speaking regions. For example, "basi" is the loan word from bus in Hong Kong. But people call the bus "gong che" and "gong gao che" in Taiwan and mainland China, respectively. Another example of loan words is from the menu, "gut li," which means cutlet. Besides English, some of the loan words are from Japanese too. "Gan ba de" comes from "gan ba de," and as in Japanese, it is commonly used to encourage people to do their best. "Wu dong." Meaning udon noodles is also a common loan word from Japanese. What are the final particles? There are lots of final particles in Cantonese. The use of the particles is to modify the attitude of the speaker or the tone of the sentence. The common final particles are a, ga, la, me, lo, etc. Let's get into more details. Do you need to know all the final particles? The final particles in Cantonese are called mei yang. You do not have to use all of the final particles unless you fully understand the meaning and usage of them. The sentence may sound extremely strange or rude if you put the wrong tone or final particle at the end of the sentence. However, being able to use final particle will make your Cantonese sound more fluent. Why does it sound more natural when you use final particles? The use of final particles can soften the tone of statements and add a sense of impatience, surprise, doubt, uncertainty, or disapproval to the speaker's attitude. If you can master the correct usage of these final particles, your Cantonese definitely sounds more natural and fluent. 
Let's compare a few sentences with and without the final particle. It's a simple sentence meaning he went to school. Now let's add the final particle gua to the sentence. It becomes I guess he went to school, but I'm not completely sure. Another final particle that makes a big difference is se. For example, Satman means ten dollars, and Satman se is only ten dollars. Besides, paying attention to the correct usage of the final particle using a different tone of the same particle will add a different meaning. For example, taka in the third tone, taka means okay, it will do, but taka. In the fourth tone, taka means are you sure or really? Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. How can I correctly express sequence of actions? In Cantonese, there are multiple terms for before and after. Each has a different nuance. So it's important to be able to distinguish which one to use for different scenarios. First, let's see how to distinguish between zi hao, yin hao, and yi hao, which are all translated as after in English. Keep in mind that zi hao specifies an action that takes place after a specific reference point, as in doing action B directly after action A. For that, Whoever involved in the conversation needs to have the knowledge of what action A is, whether it is or it's not included in the conversation. Here is a sample sentence. Which means, take a shower after the meal. Similarly, Yin Hao emphasizes the sequence of actions, as in action A and then action B. For example, which means finish the meal, then take a shower. On the other hand, yi hao refers to something that will take place for a significant length of time in the future, as in from now on in English. For example, I will not be late from now on. Next, let's see zi qin versus yi qin, both translated as before. We use zi qin to specify an action that took place before a specific reference point or before a certain thing happened. It has a nuance of something that happened only a little while earlier or a moment before. We also use it as previously. For example, fan gao zi qin yu cha nga, which means one must brush the teeth before sleeping. As for yi qin, we use it to talk about actions that took place regularly for a significant length of time in the past. It's similar to used to in English. Generally, we use yi qin for something that happened a long time ago, like at least a few years. Here is a sample sentence. Which means I used to play American football. What are the negative verbs in Cantonese? In Cantonese, there are two main ways to negate a verb. Using one negating word over the other can change nuances greatly. Let's see how. First, what is the difference between the present tense and the past tense when you're negating? Put in a simple way, we use m mm to negate action verbs in the present or future or when speaking about habitual actions. We use mo when the action either did not happen, so past tense, or isn't complete yet. For example, ngo m se, I don't eat. Ngo mo se, I didn't eat. Ngo m se, I don't eat. Ngo mo se, I didn't eat. What's the sentence pattern when negating in the past tense? For example, dim gai m si ngo din wa. Which, based on the context, we translated as Why didn't you answer my call? It's actually more close to Why aren't you answering my call? The pattern mm, plus verb is negating something in a present tense or is describing a negative action as a habit or a phenomenon 
or that a certain action is against someone's will, so they won't do it. While mo plus verb is negating something in the past tense that something wasn't done. Mm plus verb do not do. Mo plus verb did not do or have not done. Here are some sample sentences. Mm means do not. I don't go to the park. Mo means did not or have not. I didn't go to the park. What are the taboos I need to be careful of in Chinese culture? The biggest taboo in Chinese culture would be to say any word that sounds similar to say death or hong evil or unlucky. Say or hong. Especially on happy occasions such as New Year, birthday, or weddings. Let's get into more details. You've probably heard about the lucky and unlucky numbers in Cantonese. Let's see what they are. In Cantonese, the number four, say, sounds very similar to say, death, say, and say. Therefore, this number is considered bad luck. Many buildings do not have the fourth, 14th, 24th floors, and most people would avoid getting a phone number with four in it. On the other hand, the number eight, bad, sounds like bad, which means prosper and fortune. Bad and fat. Therefore, this number is considered auspicious or good luck. Moreover, 18 sub fat sounds like sub fat, meaning get rich for sure. And 28 sounds like easy to get fortune. Yi sub fat or ya bat. Yi fat. So everyone believes that these numbers will bring good luck. Let's see if other than 4 and 8, there are any significance to other numbers. Number 3, Sam, is also considered good luck, as it sounds similar to Sang, meaning lively and alive. Sang and Sam. Also, the number 6, Lo, is a good number, as it has the same pronunciation as Lo, which means wealth and blessings. Lo. On the other hand, the number 7, Tat, is a bad number because it sounds similar to a swear word and also the seventh month of the Chinese calendar is the ghost month in which ghosts and spirits are believed to come to our world from the lower realm. Okay, let's see some other curious facts about taboos in Chinese culture. When we're talking about an empty room, house, car, etc., we should avoid using the word hong empty, hong empty because it sounds the same as hong, which means evil and unlucky. In this case, we will use the antonym gut, gut, which means fortunate and propitious. So for empty rooms, instead of saying hong fong, we'll say gut fong. When we say the room is empty, we say gan fong gut jiao, instead of gan fong hong jiao, which is a little bad luck. So gan fong gut jiao. In Hong Kong, where we can auction for car's license plates, those with the lucky numbers are always sold at a very high bidding price. For instance, in 2016, a license plate with the number 28 was sold for US 2.3 million. Top 5 words and phrases for Macau. The first word is casino, Chang, casino. So there is a big casino somewhere here. And Do means gamble and Cheng means arena or a place, a location. So Do Cheng is where you gamble. Mm. After going to the casino, I'm broke. Guo Dai Hoi, crossing the ocean, is a phrase that we use to describe people going to Macau to gamble. So, you're going to gamble in Macau again? So, Guo Dai Hoi, literally to cross the big ocean. And the next word is Po Tat, Portuguese tart. It's one of the famous food in Macau. And I love it. Ngo San Sik Po Tat, I want to eat Portuguese tart. It's kind of sweet, it's kind of like egg custard in a puff pastry. And you should try it when you have a chance. And the next word is Zhu Zai Bao. Pork sandwich, pork bun. Ju is pig, 
zai is like little, so a little pig, and bao is bread or bun, so ju zai bao, pork bun. It's kind of like a pork cutlet in a grilled bun with butter in between, so it, it is pretty good. You should try it. So yuan ju zai bao hou bao a. After eating the pork bun, I'm all full. And the last word is Dai San Ba, the Great Sao Paulo Cathedral. It's one of the most famous attractions in Macau. It's a whole cathedral and then fire and bomb destroyed it until only the front cascade, only the front wall exists. So it's only a wall of the church that exists. And that's where everybody come and take picture at Dai San Ba. Dai means big. The great samba comes from Sao Paulo. In a sentence, go go to Hui Dai Samba Yang Sang. Everybody take a photo at the Great Sao Paulo Cathedral. Five words about the Hong Kong skyline. Here, the tallest building is IFC, Guangzai Gam Yong Zhong Sam International Financial Center, Guangzai International Gam Yong Financial. Center, Zhong Sam, Guangzai Gamel, Zhong Sam. There are a lot of shops and cinema and office there. So we go there. Also, it's close to the ferry station, the Star Ferry Station. So it's a place that I go a lot. Tin Seng Siu Lun, the Star Ferry. You might be able to see a lot of ferries in the Victoria Harbor. Tin Seng Siu Lun, the Star Ferry. It's the cheapest way to get between the two islands, not island, but the two districts from Hong Kong Island to Kowloon Peninsula. So I love it. It's a very relaxing way to cross the harbor. Weifeng Dai Ha, HSBC building. Weifeng Dai Ha, HSBC is a Hong Kong and Shanghai bank corporation. The bank name. So HSBC. This building is built by the British architect Norman Foster. I heard that the rumor, the design, the design was that they could take it apart in case they need to move the whole building to UK. But I'm not sure if that's true. But it's an interesting story. And the building with the triangles、um, and the pointy tip, Zhongnan Dai Ha, Bank of China, the building of Bank of China. That is another very iconic building. At night, they all light up, and it's very cool and special, and it represents the Hong Kong skyline very nicely. And then, last word is Hai Guang Sing, Harbour City. We are in Harbour City. It's、uh, right in front of the harbour, as you can see, and it's a big complex of office and restaurants and shopping mall and events venues. So harbor is Hong Kong, Sing is city. So Hong Kong, Sing. Want to speed up your language learning? Get access to all of our best PDF cheat sheets for free. Just click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Five words that you need when you come visit. So the first word is Wang Dai Xin Miu, the Wang Dai Xin Temple. So Miu is temple, Miu, and Wang Dai Xin is the name of the. God, kind of like a god figure. He brings you good luck, health, wealth, love, whatever you're looking for, whatever you want. You can ask for, ask him for it. So when we come here, we have to sang hang. Sang hang is to offer the es, essence, incense, like a long stick, and then you burn on the tip, and then it gets smoky. Hang that is called hang. And sang hang means to offer the incense, and that means it's kind of like feeding the god. They eat those things to、um, get more powerful, I guess. So sang hang, sang is to go up or offer up to the god. So sang hang in a sentence, sang hang 嗰阵要虔诚 You have to be serious. When you offer the incense, like you're not gonna be joking when you offer the incense, and you have to be serious and respectful. The next word is cow team. Cow team is cow is to back, and team is kind of like a 
like a stick that has a number, and the number will tell your fortune for this year. So Kao Qin, it is a whole bunch, I think, around 123 or around that number of sticks in a cup, and you have to keep shaking it until one of them fall out, and then that. One stick that fell out has a number that you have to ask the master. What does it mean? And while you're doing that cow team, you have to think about something. For example, love. You have to think about love for the the whole way you do it, or family, or your career, or should I move? Things like that. And then it's supposed to answer your prayer or give you an answer. And the next word is related to cow team. It's guy team. Guy is to explain or to solve, like to solve a mystery or to solve a problem. Team is again that little stick that tells your fortune for this year, in a sentence. Cow team 之后就去解 team. After you beg for the stick, like the stick stick came out, then you get the answer. You get you ask for the answer of what it means. And the next word is pengon. Pengon means peaceful or happiness. Like everything goes well, everything goes smoothly. So pengon. So it's a good luck, good fortune, good health. 我祝你一家平安 I hope your whole family is well. I wish your whole family well. 我祝你一家平安 Five words and phrases you need to know when you visit the peak. Sun Dang, the peak. So Sun is mountain or hill, and Dang is the top, the very tip top. So the peak, Sun Dang. 我哋今日上山頂咯 Let's go to the peak today. And the next word is Wei Gong. Wei Gong, Victoria Harbour. So behind me, between those two lands, that's Victoria Harbour, Wei Gong. 我哋可以搭渡轮。过维港 ，we can take the ferry across the Victoria Harbour. And the next phrase is 好靓啊 ，it's really beautiful. So when you see a view like this, you can say 好靓啊 ，it's really beautiful. And the next word is 尖沙咀。尖沙咀 is a district. It's a very famous tourist attraction. So a lot of museum. And shops and hotels are there, and restaurants, so you can check it out there. Zim Sa Joy, that's the district name. It means well, Zim is like pointy, Sa is sand, and Joy is mouth. It doesn't make any sense. It's just the name. And the next word is Tiu Sub, humid. The weather is super humid right now, and it's very hot. So Tin Hei Hou Tiu Sub, the weather is very humid. Hong Kong usually start getting humid between May and September, so it's very sticky everywhere. <laughs> But it's still nice to visit. Five words for Tetsu Stanley. Tetsu Wing Tan. Tetsu Wing Tan Stanley Beach. Tetsu is the area. It's a coastal town, and it's a very laid-back area. Very nice beach. Tetsu Wing Tan Stanley Beach. Tetsu is Stanley, and Wing Tan is the beach. 今日 Tetsu Wing Tan 好多人 There are a lot of people at Stanley Beach. 美丽楼，美丽楼 Mary House. Mary House is a Victorian era building in Stanley. It used to be in Central, but they moved it here. It's a very nice building, and many people take wedding photos there. There are a few restaurants in the Mary House. And it has a very nice coast view, so it's a nice place to relax and watch the sunset. Mei Lei Lao, Murray House, Tetsu Dai Gai, Stanley Main Street. Tetsu again is the town name. Tetsu Dai Gai, Dai means big. Gai is street, so big street, so the main street. Tetsu Dai Gai. You will see a lot of restaurants and bars and pubs and shops and souvenir shops at Tetsu Dai Gai. Go to Tetsu Dai Gai, buy souvenir, buy souvenir at the Stanley Main Street. And there is a market there too, like the street market. Maybe you find something very cheap and good bargain.
And the next word is Tachu Guangchang, Stanley Plaza. Tachu, Stanley, and Guangchang is Plaza. There are a lot of、um, shops and restaurants and bars in there. You can have Chinese dim sum in the Stanley Plaza. Tachu Guangchang, 有时会有表演 There are sometimes performances at the Stanley Plaza. 龙舟赛事 Dragon Boat Race. 龙舟 is dragon boat. 龙 is dragon. 舟 is like boat ship. So 龙舟赛事 Dragon Boat Race. Every year, there is one super big dragon boat race. In 2018, is on June 18th, and every year is a different date depending on the festival. So check it out when you're in town. The dragon boat race, and people would dress up and cheer for the team, and some company would send their employees to compete in the dragon boat race. It's a super big carnival there, so if you're in town, don't miss it. But it's gonna be very hot, so be prepared. Tachu Longzhou Chai Si, the dragon boat race at Stanley. Today we are in Stanley. This is Stanley Tachu. It's at the south part of Hong Kong Island. So this is Hong Kong Island. So this is Stanley. You see fishing boat. So this is a coastal town, and you can see a lot of fishing boat. You see fishing boat. You means fishing. You means boat. 呢度有紅色嘅漁船、藍色嘅漁船同埋黃色嘅漁船。There is red fishing boat, blue fishing boat, and yellow fishing boat. 美麗樓 Murray House. And the next word is 美麗樓。美麗樓 Murray House. It's a building built from the Victorian era, and it used to be in Central, the other district、um, on the north side of the Hong Kong Island. And they moved it here to Stanley. And you can see this is Murray House. It's a very old style Victorian style building, and now they put an H and M in it, <laughs> so you can shop. Chan Tang Restaurant. And the next word is Chan Tang Restaurant. There are a couple of there. Are, There are some restaurants along the main street, the Stanley Main Street, and they are mostly seafood restaurant. 去海鮮餐廳食海鮮 Go to a seafood restaurant to eat seafood. 海鮮 is seafood and 餐廳 is restaurant. Seafood restaurant is 海鮮餐廳麥當勞 McDonald's. McDonald's in Cantonese is 麥當勞 McDonald's very similar. 去麥當勞食早餐 Go to have breakfast at McDonald's. 去麥當勞食早餐 Long dragon. And the last word is dragon. Long dragon. This is a dragon, and you can find many dragon sculpture or painting or engravement all around Hong Kong because it represents Hong Kong. And in a sentence, dragon. Here there are two dragons. There are two dragons here. Let's talk about some makeup words in Cantonese. Here we go. Fajong makeup. So fajong is makeup. Today I have fajong. Today I put on makeup. Of course. This、yeah. <laughs> fajong is a galaxy themed makeup. Galaxy. Galaxy. And the next word is Fa Zhang Si, makeup artist. So as you learned, Fa Zhang is makeup, and the person doing it is the makeup artist. And we just add Si after the noun or the verb. For example, Gao Si, Gao is to teach, and then we add Si. People who teach are teachers. So Gao Si teachers, Fa Zhang Si makeup artist. In a sentence, 我朋友 Yana 系个化妆师。My friend Yana is a makeup artist. 发型师 hairstylist. 发型 means hairstyle, and again, adding the C, people who do hairstyling is the hairstylist. So, 发型师，我今日个发型靓唔靓啊 ？How is my hairstyle today? Do you like it? 你中唔中意我今日嘅发型啊 ？Do you like my hairstyle today? So, 发型师。Hairstylist. 
佢嘅目標係做髮型師。His goal is to become a hairstylist. 遮瑕膏 concealer， 遮 means to cover， 瑕 means flaws， and 膏 is like ointment or cream， so 遮瑕膏 ，a cream that covers your flaws， that's the concealer。邊個牌子嘅遮瑕膏好用呢 ？Which brand's concealer is good？ 粉底 ，foundation。粉底，粉 is like powder， 底 is like under underneath， so that powder or that substance that go underneath or that covers up is foundation， 粉底。搽完粉底，皮膚會睇落好滑。Your skin looks flawless. Your skin looks very smooth after putting on foundation. 搽粉底 to put on foundation. 搽 is the verb to put on， like 搽。Any kind of cream or lotion, we also use the verb 擦，擦粉底 to put on foundation. 眼影 eye shadow. 眼 means eye, 影 means shadow. Very straightforward. So eye shadow. 今日我有粉紅色眼影 Today I have pink eye shadow. 胭脂 blush. 胭脂 blush. 最近興粉紅色嘅胭脂 Lately, the trend is all about pink blush. So, 粉紅色嘅胭脂 pink blush. When people are blushing, we don't say 胭脂 We only use 胭脂 as the noun, like the the makeup 胭脂唇膏 lipstick. 唇膏唇 means lips. 膏 is ointment or cream or anything that you put an extra layer. So, 唇膏紅色嘅唇膏 Red lipstick, 桃紅色嘅唇膏 rosy red lipstick. So I can say, 我今日擦咗桃紅色嘅唇膏 Today I put on a rosy red lipstick. 睫毛液 mascara. 睫毛 means 眼睫毛 like、uh, the eyelashes is 眼睫毛 So 睫毛液液 is kind of like a liquid. So the liquid that put you put on your eyelashes is 睫毛液 In a sentence, 睫毛液通常係黑色或者啡色 Mascara are usually in black or brown. 睫毛液通常都係黑色或者啡色卸妝油 makeup remover in oil form. So 卸妝卸 means to take off. To remove, zhong is the makeup, like as in fa zhong. So se zhong means to remove the makeup. So usually I use the makeup removing oil. So se zhong yao yao is oil. Yong se zhong yao se zhong, gan zhen di. Using makeup removing oil, remove your makeup nicely, like clean. It's very clean. That's what I think. That's my opinion. And. And if you have other suggestions, you can leave it in the comment section. Hi everyone! Welcome back to Cantonese Weekly Words. Today we are going to talk about currency exchange. 外幣兑換，兑換 to exchange 兑換。Um, we use this for money only, for currency only. So we don't say we 兑換 a product at the store. We usually just say 換。唔該，我想兑換兩千蚊港幣。Excuse me, I want to exchange two thousand Hong Kong dollars. Hong Kong dollars, 港幣 or 港元，港幣 Hong Kong dollars. I have some Hong Kong dollars here. 二十蚊港幣，一百蚊港幣，五百蚊港幣。And um, because the one hundred dollar bill is red. We call it Hong Sam Yu, red clothes fish. Hong Sam Yu, red clothes fish is a kind of fish that is red. We also have a thousand dollars bill. It's golden color, so we call it Gam Ngao, the golden bull, golden cow. Gam Ngao as the thousand dollar bill. But since 2013, because there were a lot of counterfeit thousand dollar bill in Hong Kong. Uh, many establishment, many shops stop taking thousand dollar bill. So even at the bank, they would give you two five hundred dollar bills instead of one thousand dollar bill. 
keep note about that and don't be surprised when you go to a restaurant or a shop and they refuse to accept the thousand dollar bill. Okay. 有些店鋪頭不收一千元港幣 Some shops do not accept a thousand dollar Hong Kong bill 歐羅, Euro 歐羅, Euro Here I have 45 Euro 我有45元歐羅 And in the financial report, sometimes they use 歐元 It's the same as 歐羅, 歐元 It's like Euro money So they are the same um, 我下星期去歐洲旅行,要兑換啲歐元 I'm going to Europe for a trip next week So I need to exchange some Euro 英鎊, British Pound, 英鎊 I have 20 British Pounds 我有20英鎊20英鎊可以買啲咩呢? What can I buy with 20 British Pounds? Let us know in the comment section How would you spend it? 日元, Japanese Yen 一萬日元 五千日元 一千日元 or just, yen, or just yen But we cannot really write it out in Chinese There is no such word as yen We sometimes put the dollar sign The yen sign 一千yen 五千yen 一萬yen Also work So you don't have to say 日元 but on the news, they will say yuan. they will not say yen, usually. Hong Kong shopping. Hong Kong people pay a lot of attention to the Japanese yen because we love shopping there. So now that Japanese yen is cheaper, everybody is like taking a trip to Japan for shopping or vacation. And it's so much cheaper than what it used to be like five years ago. So that's it for today. Today we talked about currency exchange, and what kind of currency do you use in your country? Let us know in the comment section. So I'll see you next time. I'm Olivia. Great work! Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and ebooks for free. Just click the link in the description.